let's create a Python project inside of VS Code. So to do this, you're gonna have to create a folder and we can do that by going to file and then click on open folder. I know it's a bit counterintuitive to open a folder that we haven't created yet, but inside of the file explorer, what we can do is just right click and then go to new and then folder. From here, we have to give it a name. So I'll call this Python project. Now you can click on select folder to open up this workspace. From here, obviously we have nothing in here and we need to add things. So how do we do that? Well, first we have to make sure that we have the Python extension installed in VS Code. So to do that, we either hit control shift X on our keyboard, or we go over to this extensions toolbar on the left-hand side. From here, we just type in Python. Now it will give us a list of extensions, but what we want here is the Python extension as well as the Python debugger extension. Make sure both of these are installed. Once you have both of them installed, you can close out of this, go back to the Explorer, and now you can hit Control shift p on the keyboard to open up the command palette. Let's type in Python and see what we get. Notice here we have a bunch of different options that we can choose from from this Python extension. The one that we want to first use is actually to create an environment. Let's hit Enter on this and now it opens up a new window where we can choose what environment to create. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because we want to isolate this particular project from all the other Python projects that we might have on our computer. We want to make sure that we have an environment that we can set up and reset up if we need to on a different project or in, on a different computer somewhere else. This gives us consistency within this project so that we don't have to question, oh, what Python version are they using? What imports or packages are they using? Everything is listed out inside of the environment. So for me, I'm going to create a virtual environment here. And now you select your interpreter, and this will be what version of Python that you're going to be running for this project. For me, I'll be selecting the 3.11 version, but you can download a newer version from the python.org website. So here I'll hit enter, and now it starts creating my environment. What it's doing is it's actually taking the original Python exe and putting it inside of this virtual environment. This will be so that we can use that virtual environment Python executable as as opposed to using the global executable that's just installed on your computer. So if we open up this folder, we can see that we have a bunch of other folders and some files here. We have some scripts and this inside of scripts, we have the Python executable, as well as our pip executable that we'll use to install any dependencies that we want for our project. So now that we've created the virtual environment, let's actually create a Python file. To do that, make sure you have this empty space selected and click on this new file icon. It'll create a new file. Now let's just call it hello.py. Now automatically VS Code picks up the .py extension and knows that it's a Python file. So it automatically gives you a linter as well as any of the other pieces for the extension, including a run configuration. So now I added this little Python code and all it's doing is it's printing out a message. This is so that we can test how to run the Python file. To do that, we can save the file and then we can go to this little play button in the upper right. It'll just say run Python file and it will run the one that is currently open in the editor. So I have this hello pi. If I were to have other files and they were potentially open, that would be the one that it would be running is the one that's currently in your view. So I'll hit play and you can see that it actually is putting us inside of this virtual environment and then running that python.exe that then runs this script and we print out hello world. Now I also wanna show you a couple other ways that you can run this. What you can do is you could actually hit shift enter and it will run the current line that you're on. You'll notice that it just runs this line. So when I hit shift enter, it ran print message down here. And obviously it doesn't know what message is and that's because I never ran that piece of code. What shift enter just did is it actually opened up a read eval print loop or otherwise known as REPL. This is just a Python command line interface. And from here, we could type anything into this terminal and have it run that Python code. This is useful when you're just trying to test things out and possibly running multiple lines of code. So instead, if I select a couple lines here and then hit shift enter, you'll see that it actually does the entire selection. So I have message equals hello world, and then it does print message and now this is the output. Now, one thing to note here that once you do this shift enter, it opens up this REPL terminal. And if you were to hit the play button to run the entire script, it actually has an error because what you're doing is you're actually still in this REPL environment. So the problem is once you hit shift enter, you can't really go back to running the file itself. 
what you would have to do is you would have to exit this REPL environment before you can run the whole file. To exit the REPL environment, you can hit Control Z on your keyboard and then hit Enter and it automatically exits. From here, we could just run the file. Now, I also wanna show you how imports work so that you understand how to utilize dependencies inside of your Python project. So I've added a couple lines to our code. I added the NumPy package and I used the random function inside of it to get a random number between one and nine and I printed it out. This will allow us to see how to install these packages. So you can see up here, it says import NumPy could not be resolved. And what this is telling you is that you haven't actually installed it into your virtual environment. So we need to do that. We can go into the terminal and use pip to actually install the NumPy dependency. To do that on Windows, we just type in pi-m pip install numpy and I'll hit enter. I've actually installed numpy before, so it's actually just pulling from a cached version that I had downloaded before, but yours might actually be downloading the files and then installing and then once it succeeds, now you can see that that error that we had before is gone and we actually can run this bit of code. So if we run the file, you can see now we have a hello world down here as well as a random number, which it chose two. Now that we've added a dependency, we actually want to make sure that we're consistent across all computers that we are running this Python script from. Because one computer could have one version of NumPy on it, another one could have a different version, and what we want is we want them to be synced up so that we don't have any issues or consistency problems between computers. To get this consistency, we can run pip freeze and then pipe this out to a requirements.txt file. Another command on another computer can run this requirements.txt file to actually import all of the dependencies that we have in our current virtual environment environment onto the new PC. So you can see a requirements.txt file got created and inside of it is our dependency and the version for our dependency. So hopefully this is just a quick start for your Python development journey inside of VS Code. Now there are plenty of other things before this is considered a production level project. Like you probably wanna add source control at some point, but those things are covered in other videos. So that is how you create and run a Python project inside of VS Code.